Board Games 4K. So Marco Polo, this is a dice placement kind of worker placement game. And what will happen is everyone will be given a pool of five dice to roll simultaneously. And you roll your dice and then you'll arrange them on your player board in order. It makes it a little bit easier, right? You'll arrange them in order. And then what you'll be doing, you'll be taking your dice and you'll be placing them out onto the main board and you'll be taking actions associated with the spaces that you place your, your dice on. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to go around the main board and we're going to tell you how to play Marco Polo. At the beginning of the game, you're going to be getting a couple of objective cards and uh, on your objective cards, you've got cities that are displayed on there. So what it's telling you to do, it's telling you to visit these cities on the objective cards to gain these, these victory points. So if I visited Moscow and uh, wherever that says, I'd get five victory points. And it, likewise, if I visited these two and had a trading post in each one, then I'd get that many points. And then down here, it's just like a cumulative thing. So if I have one trading post in any of these cities, I'll get one point, two trading posts in any of these cities, I'll get three points, so on and so forth. You can get up to 10 points if you manage to get all your, tra your trading posts in all the, all the objective cards. You'll score them at the end of the game. So what you'll be doing in this game, you'll be uh, taking your dice that you've rolled and you'll be placing them on different areas of the board. And uh, you'll notice that some of these, these spaces have got blue around them. That means that you can multiple players can put their dice on these spaces, but you'll be stacking them up. And you'll have to pay a cost if, if there's a die already there. So on this one, you'll, be, you'll have to pay the amount of pips on your die that you'll be placing on there. So if, there's all, if there was already somebody's dice on there, I'd put a one on there, I'd pay one coin to the bank. It will pay, if I put this on now, I'll pay two coins of the bank, right? So there's always a cost involved on the blue spaces. On brown spaces, there is no cost involved, okay? So uh, yeah, we're now gonna tell you what the different actions are in Marco Polo. So the first action that we got here is uh, take five gold, and oh, it doesn't matter what number you put on the take five gold, you place your doodah on there, and then you'll take the five gold. And obviously in a blue space, if somebody else wants to plonk their die, they have to pay a cost and then they'll take the bar gold. And you'll keep stacking these dice up until they fall over, right? So the second action that you can take is you can visit the Grand Bazaar. And this is where, this is like a spreadsheet for all your accountants out there. So you look down this row here and this tells you how many dice you need to put on this space. So you'll either put one, one to go over here, you'll put two on here and you'll get three on there and then you'll look across here and this refers to the amount of pips on the dice that you place. So if I put this one on here, I'd do five. I'd look across to the five column and go down and I'll get three one and two coins, yeah? Easy peasy, multiple people can go here but you'll have to pay the cost and it gets more expensive if somebody is in this one because you obviously have to put three dice out. So the next one is to seek the favor of the Khan and I don't know what he wants in return for his favor, but, um, Hmm. But uh, yeah, what you'll be doing in this one, you'll be putting a die out here. And it doesn't really matter what number die you put out, but you'll put a die out of any number and you'll be getting one of any of the resources and two camels for your trouble. And if somebody else wants to go there, they'll have to put, put a die out that is equal to or higher in value than the die that's preceding it. And uh, where, it's, uh, the, where these are separate action spaces, you can go there as many times as you want in different spaces. So I could do this, put a three out, and then the next person could put a three out, and then I could put a three or four or five or a six out. And once these are all filled up, then nobody else can go there. And that's the favor of the Khan. Just uh, make sure you ask him what he wants in return before you visit him, right? I'd recommend that. So the next thing you can do is you can go and get a contract and you can get up to two contracts in this action. So what you'll be doing, you'll be taking one of your dice, you'll be putting it on this blue space and then you'll be able to take one or two contracts depending on the number of pips on the dice. So if I put a three out there, I'd look across spreadsheet fashion and I'd get three, I could choose any of these from three to two to one and I could take one, two, one or two of these contracts and then I'll put them in on my player board. And if you notice, you've got a, a maximum of two contracts that you can have at any one time. So if you've, if you've got more than two contracts or you take a contract and you, you haven't got a space for it, you have to dump one of the existing contracts on the bottom of the discard part of the contract discards. And that's the contract space. So next is probably the most, it's not even complex, but it's probably the most complex action you can take. So it's a travel action. So you notice you've got a blue space here and these two dice and you'll, you, 
In this game, you always take the lowest number die that you place out there. You, don't, you always disregard the highest one. So in this instance, so you see I'll put a three out and you'll look across and you'll see that I can, I can pay 12 gold and I'll be able to move my little Marco Polo boat three spaces on the travel map, yeah? And obviously you have to pay the cost of the blue space, so it can be quite expensive. And you'll be moving three, because in that, that example, I'll move three spaces. So you, you, get, you could always count these oasis. So you, you'll be moving one, two, I could stop in Moscow or I could move to Anxi. But um, yeah, you, you, you'll move and you'll stop. So wherever you stop, say if I stopped in Moscow, there's little spaces there for trading posts. And you'll take one of these little trading posts and you'll place it out onto the board. And then in a big city, this means that if you've got a trading post in a big city, it means you've now got access to these extra bonus actions that you can take. You notice they're brown spaces, so only the people with trading posts in that city can go there. And you'll be putting a, a die out and then you'll be taking the action as many times as there are pips on the die. So if with this one, I could take this action four times if I've got the resources to do it. So I need to trade in two of any of these resources, but they have to be different. And then I'll be able to move my bloke one extra space on the travel action. Like here, every round I could trade in a camel and a silk to get eight coins, yeah? And down here, I could trade in a camel and a gold to get six coins and two victory points. I mean, this is insane. But as you're traveling around the map, You'll notice that you've got these, this cost you've got to pay to move through these roads. So I'd have to pay three camels here. If I travel across water, it's going to cost me coins. And if I go down into the south there, it's going to cost me 15 coins to go from Adana to Kochi. And that's really expensive. So yeah, the travel action is lucrative, but very, very expensive. So if you travel into the into a minor city, you put your, your trading post down on the board and in minor cities, you always, this exclamation mark means that you always get this benefit at the beginning of every round. So for instance, in this, in this example, I'll get one gift at the beginning of every round. And the gifts, they come in a, like a mini expansion, but put this one down here. And at the beginning of every round, I'll get two of any of these resources, but they have to be different. And that's the, I say, that's the benefit of the, of the small cities. So you'll be working your way around on the travel map. You'll be uh, working, you'll, you'll try to visit the cities that are in your, on your objective cards. And eventually somebody's gonna make it to Beijing and uh, you'll, be, you'll be putting your bloke on Beijing. You'll be putting a trading post out on Beijing. First person to visit it gets 10 points. Second person to visit it gets seven points, four and one. And at the end of the game, you can also trade in any of your extra resources you've got left over for one extra victory point. Okay, so that's, that's the basic actions of uh, Marco Polo. And now there's also bonus actions that you can take before or after your main action. And you can do this as many times as you want. So we'll just run through them quick and then we'll wrap this little mini tutorial, I suppose. We'll wrap it up. So the first bonus action that you can do is you can complete a contract. And what you'll do with this, you will pay the resource on the left side of the contract and you'll gain the benefit on the other side of the contract. And all these contracts, they're, in, they're all explained in a supplement, and that's essentially how you complete contracts. And at the, like we said, at the end of the game, if, you, if you've got the most contracts, you get an extra seven victory points. So it's quite important to make sure that you complete as many contracts as possible in this game. So the second bonus action you can do is you can place a die of any number, it doesn't matter what number you put out, and you'll take three coins. And anyone could do this. This is uh, in a brown space, isn't a brown space, or a blue space, anyone can do this. So you'll place these out in this little purse, this little pose pouch, and you'll take three coins. You can do that as many times as you have dice. So the third bonus action you can do is that you can, you can pay a camel to the bank and that allows you to re-roll one of your dice. So you pay your camel, you re-roll your dice and you'll put it back on your player map. Second thing you can do is you can pay two camels and then you will be able to alter or modify the pips on your dice. So a three will become a four. You can do it by one step. Three will become a four or a two. And you can do this multiple times so long as you've got camels and you're willing to pay it. So you could say then pay another two camels and turn that to a one or back to a three if you, if you wanted to. All right. So the third thing you can do is you can pay three camels to the bank and then you will be able to take one of these black extra bonus dice. You'll roll it immediately and then you'll put it on your player board. And this acts as if you can, you can take another action. As soon as you've used it, you will have to 
put it back where it came from. If you don't use it by the end of the round, then you will have to return it to the supply. But um, yeah, you can only take one of these. What, you can only take one of these black dice per turn. And um, yeah, that's, that's all the bonus actions that you can do. So once you've done that, then you do a little bit of final scoring. So you'll uh, you'll get one victory point for every 10 coins that you've got. You'll uh, If you've got a bloke from Beijing, you'll get those points. You'll be able to trade in your two resources for one victory point if you've got a trading post in Beijing. And um, you've got to remember that camels aren't good. So if you're sort of trading them in, camels do not count as goods. But uh, yeah, the person with the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. And if there's a tie, then it's whoever's got the most camel mates will win the game. And uh, that's basically how you play Marco Polo. One thing that sets this game apart is that everyone's given uh, at the beginning of the game this, this personality that they're sort of, I suppose, pretending to be, I guess. And um, this is probably the, the weirdest thing about this game is that every one of these personalities has got like a game-breaking special ability. and. I tell you, some of these are absolutely insane. You know, like Marco Polo himself, he gets his, he gets a free polo mint with every every turn, and he also gets a free contract every turn. Yeah, so yeah, that's mental. And uh, this one, this bloke, he all, he gets to travel every action, travel, and he also gets free coins at the beginning of every round. And this one, he he don't have to pay to use occupied spaces, right? So. What? And this one, every time someone uses the Grand Bazaar, he gets a free resource. What the? I mean, we found, we found ourselves, every time we play this, we go, like, wow, we showed your ability. And everyone's going, well, we showed yours. So yeah, everyone's got these, these this posse of gangsters that they're gonna be, they're gonna be messing about with, right? And um, yeah, these, uh, these, these, these are like the sort of cosmic in camera aliens of, of the ancient world and um, yeah you'll be taking one of these and you'll be uh, marvelling at your own ones and being envious of everybody else's so yeah can't believe we forgot to mention them that makes me an idiot right but um, yeah so we're going to go away and we're going to tell you what we do like what we don't like and then we're going to tell you whether this is worth bothering with five years four years after it was released and we'll see you in a bit <laughs>